What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to Red Seat Radio. My name is Corbin, and we've been wondering for a while now on this channel in Red Sox Nation in general if there were going to be any more additions made to this Red Sox team. Specifically, were there going to be any more additions made to the middle infield of this Red Sox team? Because honestly, the middle infield of this Red Sox team has been lacking depth all off season, and we finally got our answer to that question. Because just a couple of hours ago, the Red Sox announced that they had signed middle infield slash utility guy Yu Chang. So what we're going to do in today's video is we're going to break down Yu Chang's contract. We're going to talk about the years attached. We're going to talk about the dollar amount. We're going to talk about how that affects the luxury tax, all of that good stuff. And we're going to talk about what Yu Chang's effect on this team and on this roster is going to look like, how he impacts the 2023 Boston Red Sox. But before we get into that, do me a favor, make sure you guys have hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Also make sure you guys have hit the like button as well. Helps these videos out a ton and it would mean a lot to me. Thank you all very much for clicking on this one. Let's get into it. Okay, so let's start by breaking down the actual contract itself between the Red Sox and Yu Chang. It was announced just a couple of hours ago that Yu Chang and the Red Sox were in agreement on a major league deal. Now, I felt the need to call out the fact that it was a major league deal because that means he's going to start the year on the 40-man roster and with this big league club. Now, the deal itself, dollars and years-wise, is a one-year $850,000 deal. It does have incentives attached that would increase that total dollar amount, and while we don't know the actual value of the incentives itself, it's fairly safe to assume that at the end of the day, if Yu Chang hits all of his incentives attached to his contract, he will end up with a one year, slightly above $1 million deal. Now, actual dollars wise, this makes sense to me. At first, I was a bit confused because when it was first announced, my assumption was that he was going to get a minor league deal. He was going to start the year with the Red Sox in spring training. He was going to be one of those guys who was battling for a bench spot to be the sort of middle infield depth of this team so it took me by surprise that the Red Sox had signed him to a major league deal giving him such a leg up when it comes to that spring training competition however once I thought about it for a second the contract itself seems to make sense Yu Chang is a defensive forward type player he's very decent defensively he's not very good at the plate which we will talk about in a second and he's mostly a depth piece so to pay only $850,000 a year before incentives for that type of player seems to make a lot of sense to me. The other good thing about this contract is it's very DFA-able. I don't know if that's a word, but you understand what I'm saying, right? $850,000 to us is a ton of money, but to a major league baseball organization like the Red Sox, that is pennies on the dollar. This does not guarantee that he's going to be the depth piece for this Red Sox team going into 2023. What it does is give him a leg up and a head start on everyone else. So that competition that we talked about in last video, in terms of spring training and the shortstop second base a depth position on this bench is still very much alive and well Yu Chang just sort of has a heads up on it so if we're talking actual dollar value itself and breaking down the contract itself I don't hate it at all I think this is a very decent value for a guy who is going to give you okay defense a slightly above average defense and really not do much for you at the plate he's a utility guy he can play all over the field so in my opinion the contract itself makes sense and it's one that's expendable, which is exactly what you'd want when you sign a guy like this. So the contract itself, fairly decent. Let's talk about what Yu Chang's actual effect on this Red Sox roster is going to mean, because in my opinion, it actually does have a fairly big effect. So the common theme here when I was talking about Yu Chang's contract was he was depth. He was defensive depth. And there is a reason for that because he's simply not very good offensively. Throughout his career that spans from 2019 to 2022, Yu Chang has an average of 213 with a on-base percentage of 279 and just a 360 slug. He also has a career 76 OPS plus, making his overall career at the plate about 24% less productive at the plate than the average player in baseball. He's not exactly going to light the world on fire. In fact, he's probably not going to start any fires at all for you at the plate. Now, you guys may recognize Yu Chang's name, and the reason for that is because Chang was on the Red Sox in 2022. He was one of the guys picked up to give us some depth during the bazillion injuries we had throughout the year in 2022, and he ended up playing 11 games with this Red Sox team. And for the Red Sox in 2022, Yu Chang has 
has an abysmal 150 average with an on base percentage that's much higher at 346 and again a miserable slug at 250. He also has an OPS plus right around his career average sitting at 70 so about 30 percent less productive than the average player in baseball when he was playing with the Red Sox. Now obviously this is an extremely small sample size and it's really hard to pull anything out of this. Throughout his career though one thing I will say is that he does have a fairly decent on base percentage and it was really highlighted with his time on the Red Sox. The fact that he had a 170 average with a 346 on base percentage means that he was taking a ton of walks and it could also indicate that he was getting a bit unlucky with his actual hits. Now the slug does indicate that he was not hitting the ball very hard but the fact that he was getting on base could be a good sign for his plate approach going into 2023. Again I'm not going to sit here and tell you that I'm expecting him to get better offensively than he was throughout the entirety of his career or with the Red Sox but I'm just trying to pull out some things to be positive about in terms of his uh, plate approaches in 2023. That's not really why the Red Sox signed him. I think we can all agree and the Red Sox can agree as well that the main reason that they signed him was for his versatility. Yu Chang can play every single position on the infield aside from catcher and he's fairly decent at it. For the Red Sox alone in 2022, again really small sample size, he played shortstop, second base, and first base. In my opinion, the two most important positions that he played during his time with the Red Sox were shortstop and second base and at shortstop in 2022 he had a negative one defensive run saved and at second base he had a one defensive run saved again a really small sample size overall throughout Yu Chang's career he's been a fairly decent defender but just specifically on the Red Sox in 2022 he averaged out to a zero in defensive run saved which is league average so he's going to give you league average to slightly above league average defense in my opinion and that to me is the main reason why the Boston Red Sox signed him now as far as how all of this affects the 2023 Red Sox I think the biggest way that this is going to affect the team is because this essentially solidifies that Christian Arroyo is going to get a majority of games at second base he's going to be in majority our starting second baseman throughout the year in 2023 because Yu Chang essentially replaces Arroyo's role on the bench, right? Arroyo was in there. He he played some outfield. It wasn't very good, but he did play some outfield. He was mostly on that bench in 2022 in his time with the Red Sox to be the utility infielder. Bringing in Yu Chang, who does the exact same thing, in my opinion, indicates that the Red Sox are planning on going with Christian Arroyo at second base, and I absolutely love that idea. We even made a video on Christian Arroyo on this channel titled How Christian Arroyo Could Save the Red Sox, because in my opinion, I think Christian Arroyo has a really high upside and seeing him every single day is going to be a ton of fun and I can't wait to watch what he does. But all in all, the fact that the Red Sox are putting their confidence in Christian Arroyo, in my opinion, is going to have the biggest effect on this Red Sox roster. Now, obviously, they still have Adalberto Montesi, they have Yu Chang now, so we're probably going to see a bit of a rotation throughout the middle infield, not just second base, but shortstop as well for a majority of the games, in my opinion it's going to be Kike Hernandez and Christian Arroyo and that just got solidified with the signing of Yu Chang. Now honestly would I have rather had the Red Sox sign Elvis Andrews or Jose Iglesias? Probably, right? I think that they can have a higher impact in the specialized positions of middle infield, whether that be Iglesias, who could play second in shortstop, or Elvis Andrews, who can just play shortstop. But in my opinion, this signing really indicates that the Red Sox were looking for a replacement in Christian Arroyo's spot, as opposed to a replacement for Christian Arroyo at second base. And again, I'm a big fan of that. All in all, I don't hate this signing. I'm not exactly excited about this signing either. I don't know how much Yu Chang actually brings to the plate aside from just being a body who can play defense for your team. And so you can give guys days off without sacrificing that defensive ability. Outside of that though, he's not going to be a guy who you pinch hit in the bottom of the ninth with two runners on first and third. And you got to try and win this game, right? He's not going to be that guy. He's going to be a defensive substitution. And again, it's not even in my opinion guaranteed that he's 
starts the year with the Red Sox. With the structure of his contract and the dollar amount attached to it, I could very well see them still having that sort of middle infield competition throughout spring training. And if he does not do very well, DFAing him before the season starts. But either way, the Red Sox did acquire their middle infield depth for the 2023 season as of right now but that's just my opinion let me know in the comment section down below what do you think of this what do you think of the signing of Yu Chang what do you think this means for the Red Sox team and do you think he's going to start the year with the Red Sox or do you think he ends up getting DFA'd as well let me know all your thoughts on Yu Chang signing down below as always if you made it to the end of this video do me a favor make sure you guys have hit that subscribe button if you haven't already if you're new here we talk Red Sox content almost every single day also make sure you guys have hit the like button on this video as well as it helps these videos out a ton and it would mean a lot to me thank you all very much for clicking on this one and i will see you in the red seats